So ready and go. So the largest sphere inscribed in a right circular cone, right meaning it's symmetrical then, the apex is directly above the centre of the base circle. Well, the ratio of the volume, well, the volume of the sphere would be 4.3 pi r cubed, and the volume of the cone would be one third of pi, now it's a different radius, so I'll use r squared times its height. So just simplifying this bit to begin with. So the ratio of the volumes would be dividing these. I'll just put it down. 4 pi over 1 third of pi. Of course, it's a total waste of time writing that down. All these bits cancel out. Pi cancels, third cancels. I'm left with 4 r cubed over r squared h. That's what I want to simplify, or rather, express in terms of the angle here. So the first bit would be, what does this look like in terms of the radius of the sphere, the radius of the cone, and the height of the cone? Well, if you take a vertical section through this three-dimensional shape, you'll have a nice little isosceles triangle with a circle in it. And since it's symmetrical, you only need to consider one half of that, a right angle triangle. So this is what you've got then. Well, that will be the radius of the cone. This will be the height of the cone. So there's a nice little right angle triangle. And if that angle was 2 alpha, this angle in here will simply be alpha. Now the radius of the circle is the distance from the centre to any point, and there's the obvious point there. If you draw that in, then since that's a tangent, it'll hit at right angles, and that's the radius of the circle. And you've got two similar triangles. Large right angle triangle with alpha, small right angle triangle with alpha. So all three are the same. So I'll just put them over here. You've got the large right angle triangle with R and H and alpha. And you've got this smaller one, which I'll not draw to scale, which again has got alpha and it's got small r. And the remaining distance here, since the radius is r, this is also r, the remaining distance will be H minus r. Now, those are similar triangles, having the same angles. So you could form an expression that connects all the bits together. You could say r over its corresponding side, large, large r, would have to be this side, which would then be h minus r cos alpha over h. And there they are, all tied together in one. But I don't really need to do that, because to get this to work out, I just need to express any two of them in terms of the third one. Now, they both look as if they're aiming towards h. From this triangle, r equals h tan alpha. So r can get replaced with an h. And in this one, r equals h minus r sine alpha. And I could rearrange that, expand the bracket and take that to the front. r plus, which of course the multiple choice you don't need to waste time doing, plus r sine alpha is h sine alpha. Common factor of r, that would come out leaving 1 plus sine alpha. I'll not waste time putting that down. So h sine alpha over 1 plus sine alpha. Just pop that here now. And there you are. There's two expressions replacing R in terms of H and big R in terms of H, which you can just feed into there. Maybe I'll just rewrite that as H sine alpha over cos alpha, since the solutions didn't have any tangents in it. So the plan is now just pop them back into that and tidy up and you should be there. Right, so just moving them all out of the way to get a bit of room. So popping them in, you'll have four times. Now R will be cube this, so that will be H cubed sine cubed alpha, but unfortunately over one plus sine alpha cubed. Now I don't really want to have a fraction over a fraction, not that there's anything inherently wrong with that. So instead of dividing by this, I think I'll multiply by its reciprocal. So I'll be writing this upside down then. So I'll go cos alpha on top, but it's been squared. So cos squared alpha over, and then it will be squaring this because it's r squared, h squared sine squared alpha. And there's another h that would appear underneath. So that will also be under here. So I'll say times h. Tidy that up, you should be there, because loads of things cancel out. So what am I left with? I'm left with a 4, I'm left with a sine alpha, 
I'm left with cos squared alpha and underneath I'm left with 1 plus sine alpha cubed. So there we go. And you check the set of solutions and it's not there. It's not wrong, it's just not there. Well, it's trigonometry, so you can rearrange terms, so I'll have to rearrange this. Well, there's the obvious one. You could multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of this, the one that makes this into the difference of two squares, in other words, one minus sine alpha, which would be very handy because that'll produce one squared minus sine squared, and one minus sine squared is cos squared, and there's a cos squared on top. It's all heading very nicely. Multiply the top by that as well, except it's cubed, so I'll have to cube them. Just depends how much work you want to put down now. You've got 4 sine alpha cos squared alpha times 1 minus sine alpha cubed all over. Now that's going to form 1 squared minus sine squared, which will turn into cos squared, which will turn into cos squared to the power 3. Maybe I'll just put that down first of all. That to the power 3. And then power 2 and power 6 means I'm left with 4 sine alpha times 1 minus sine alpha cubed over cos, and that was 2 and that was 6, cos to the power 4 alpha for the ratio of the volume of the sphere to the volume of the cone.